So knit with parameters, and we get this. So in this case, you can actually change what year you want it set to. You get a drop down of all of your selectable options that are available to you. If you want to select a file, it'll open up your file system. That's really useful if you're going to take it. Welcome back everyone. My name is Brian Jenks and today we're gonna to talk about parameterized R Markdown reports, what they are and why you should care. Let's say you have a report. You have to run it for 35 different people or businesses or you know a variety of other variables that are all changing, but you just need to change just those variables and otherwise your report is basically the same. Kind of like a cookie cutter template, but where you change out some of those critical pieces so that the information contained within it is different. Well, if you wanna have only one document and just change in some input parameters to that document and have basically a one-stop shop template for doing this report for all these ver varieties of scenarios, this is a type of workflow slash tool for you. Most of this is really just messing with uh, YAML headers in the R Markdown documents, some of the pre-built options in RStudio, and a little bit with Shiny, but it's gonna be pretty basic and you're gonna see some of the power of this. So let's just jump right into RStudio. So right off the bat, first thing we always do, I'm on Mac, so it's Command Shift F10, but we're going to start a brand new R session. We want a brand new clean slate, just in case. So with that done, what are we gonna do? So with parameterized R Markdown, it's mostly contained in the YAML front matter. So YAML is that little section up at the top of a new R, Mark R Markdown document. So we can start a new document. You can see what it looks like, you know, up here at the top, this is your YAML header. It is an interesting type of syntax where you just have colon separated values, uh, a little bit like JSON without all the braces. And what this is going to do is help us get some meta options for our document. So I've popped over into a stripped down document just so you can see the bare bones functionality of using parameters. So up in the YAML header at the top level, you can see there's nothing to the, le to the left. With YAML, the indentation and the levels of indentation is very important. So the first level, we have output date, author title. These are all first level options. Also at the first level is something called params and then a colon. To specify multiple items underneath one of these top level YAML items, you have to take it to the next level, haha, and indent it. So with that, I now have another uh, actual parameter. So under params, we have one, which is YouTube. And the value for YouTube is hello YouTube. So we can put these parameters in a variety of locations. Uh, we'll see later how you can actually use it in the options for the R code chunks, and this can come in very handy for an example I'll give later. We can actually put it in a code chunk as like executable code. So to access these parameters as like a variable, like you'd normally use variables in code, you just say params, the dollar sign to like subset. So your parameters you have, if you had multiple, so let's just say data as a parameter, we could say, I don't know, test. So let's say we have params. We do a dollar sign to subset. Now you can see your two parameters that are defined in the YAML. We just care about YouTube, so we can get rid of that one. So with that, we can actually have executable code and get output. We could also use the inline R code in the markdown space for text and actually have it printed out as plain text as well. This is something very useful if you're not only using it to execute code, say as picking a data set, but you also want to name what data set later on in your text, just as plain text. So with that, we have it defined in code space and markdown space, let's knit and run. And the output will look like this. This is your code space. You can see we executed params YouTube and it actually has that output and also in the text itself very simplistic example of where you can actually place these and use them. It can work in code, it can work in text. So let's go start looking at the more meaty examples. So on this additional file, we have a couple parameters already defined. I have one for data, a toggle parameter, and a year. Cool. Also in comments, I specified like our options here, we're gonna have two options, MPG data set or diamonds data set, and then true and false. Most of this document is commented out at the moment so I can show the examples incrementally, but if we just run it right now, let's see what kind of output we get. So we get some junk here we don't care about, but the MPG data set, we defined MPG as a parameter and it was chosen in 2020, that's the year parameter. 
And then the toggle one doesn't appear here because we actually have commented out all the other code, but I'll show you where that comes in handy later. And for instance, there are some ideas of what we can do with parameters. I'll go over those in a minute and some useful resources I'll leave for you guys. So let us uncomment some of this and see what we get. So I have some code here. I'm going to uncomment it. It's just two very simple plots. One is with MPG, one is with diamonds, and it's basically a simple tile and a bar plot. Uh, not really snazzy or important. But in the code chunk options, you can see I have viz and viz2 here. This has the option of include, which is saying, hey, should I even include this code, run it, execute it, do anything with it? The option of that is set to toggle. Now toggle was a binary, true or false. So do we want to include the code for toggle or not? And for instance, in this one, I have a, an exclamation point so that this way, whatever toggle is, it'll be opposite for this one. So when I have these two examples, I'm just trying to show how you can also invert the parameter to get a result. So in this case, by setting toggle to something, one of these charts is not going to be displayed. So just by uncommenting the code with MPG as our data set, true for our toggle, and the year as 2020, we're gonna knit again. And our output looks pretty similar, except now we actually have the MPG data set because toggle was set to true. So we have MPG, 2020, MPG, the whole toggle uh, chart is now displayed here. Great. So with parameters, we can also selectively choose which code chunks we actually want to con like use, execute, and uh, retain in our docu document's final output. Let's see what happens when we change it to the diamonds data set. So I'm gonna change this to diamonds. And with diamonds, uh, because it was set to true for the MPG uh, code chunk, we're going to set it to false, which is just this example. You don't have to do this. And then we're gonna change the year to 2018. So now if I knit that with those new options, we're going to see that now the diamonds data set in 2018 now displays the code chunk for diamonds. So you can see how with parameters, we can selectively choose which parts of information and code we want to show and execute, but we can also change what is being used as a variable. So for instance, if this diamonds right here and I only had one code chunk and the, ge the general uh, chart, chart plot thing was uh, simple enough and like a template, we could easily just change, hey, which data set are we plopping in here? You know, that's an option. Or you could easily change it to a specific variable for a large group of, um, I don't know, students' names or something. Uh, very, very large amount of use cases for this. Now, I know some of you are already going to notice something that could actually be, you know, this is, a, this is beneficial, but there's still some level of manual work going on. That's true. One thing you can do programmatically is use some of the uh, functions from the per package where you actually have basically like loops, but in this case, like mapping functions where you put in a vector of parameters to a single parameter. So in this case, we could say MPG, diamonds, and empty cars, flights, whatever, those different data sets, and then put all of those into the data parameter incrementally, run the report and get a, an outputted report. In this case, you're generating four reports from a single function call, and you don't have to manually change those values. This type of thing, uh, I don't have an example for that made, but one way you could do that is with this type of uh, code right here, where we're actually calling the R markdown render function. We're passing it the name of the document, and then I have params, and we're giving it the list of parameters. So in this case, this is when you actually have the code of what you're going to execute and run, and in this case, what you're going to pass in as the parameters. Now it's, it's code, so you can easily pass in those parameters in you know, map functions. If you use this trick, however, you can't run it from a code chunk within this document, or if you can, uh, I haven't figured out how to do it because I kept trying to get this to run it like this and I kept getting errors. So what I had to do was at first copy and comment this out, save it, and then within the console, so if you could, you could run this from an R script, or another R Markdown document. But from within the console in my current working directory, um, actually not the console, in a terminal. So I'm in my current working directory. I have my files in here. Uh, there's the param.rmd. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say R, now I'm running R in the command line. And then I'm just going to paste that function, all of this stuff, R Markdown render and all the parameters. If I run that, it will knit my document exactly as if we just hit knit and it will produce the output. Now it doesn't just open up the output like when we hit knit. So I can actually go here, go to the refresh, go to param HTML, and I can open in a web browser. It will open up in my web browser. And you can see that it is 
MPG, 2019, wait a minute, diamonds, 2018. So what happens when we actually run this function is that it will override the existing parameters hard set in the file's YAML header, but if those, if those uh, parameters already exist and we don't explicitly override them, they will still be used by, as their defaults. So in this case, what we have is MPG 2019 and the toggle was set to true instead of false, which is why we have this output. So with that, very useful function if you're going to overload the parameters and overwrite them. And with a simple loop or map function, this becomes a very useful trick for generating a mass of reports all in one template. In the same vein as the prior render trick, we can also pass the params argument the value ask. What this does is it will actually open up a shiny interface to override your parameters or define them within your browser or your local host. So in this case, we can actually run this one from within our document and it will affect our output and we don't actually need to use this within the command line or um, the terminal. So when I run this code, Currently, you can see that I have diamonds false 2018. So when I run this and it opens up the shiny interface in my browser, it's diamonds toggle is false and 2018. So let's change this to MPG. Let's turn toggle to true and let's change the year to 2021 and save and right here at the bottom right and see what the output is. So it doesn't disappear, it doesn't close, but it's grayed now. If I return back to our studio, it's, you know, there's some operations going on here, some stuff happened. So this actually does, in fact, produce your output document. So when I open up param HTML, which is, this is param.rmd, so it's gonna open up this document. We have the MPG data set is now produced, MPG 2021, and this has been toggled to true. So that's why we see the MPG chart here. So this is a pretty useful tool that you get a more graphical interface to actually manipulate your variables, but it's kind of flat. I mean, you you saw that it says like, you know, your data here, it doesn't give you any options. Toggle is just a checkbox. And, you know, this doesn't really give us a lot of information. What are the possibilities? What can I do with this interface? So that's one of the downsides of doing it with just the um, ask function or the ask uh, parameter being passed there. What we actually can do that's really, really useful is we can actually knit with parameters. So what does knitting with parameters actually look like? So let me comment this out. Now with all that code commented out, it's just going to be diamonds false 2018. But when I use the, the knit button, it'll just make the document. But if I do knit options here with a little drop down and knit with parameters, it's gonna open up that same shiny interface, but not in my browser local host. It's gonna open it from our, mark, our, our studio and now I have access to diamonds, toggle, 2018. Cool, 2018 actually comes with this little, you know, incrementer here. That's cool, we're gonna change it to 2022 and yeah, leave it at diamonds. So now we can knit the document. It's going to do that. And then once it's finished, because it's still in our studio, it'll actually open up automatically, unlike running the ask uh, value for parameters. And we can see 2022, diamonds. It overloaded that YAML option for the parameter year and we have that output. So knitting with parameters, really cool to get a nice interface, have it close when you're done and have it open up automatically like you're probably used to with RStudio. So passing in params equals ask, you know, it's probably a little bit more work than just knitting with parameters. But if you're using it outside of RStudio, that's probably where you're gonna get a better use case for that option. So because that parameter interface is opening and basically is a small little shiny dashboard in a way, we can do some cool things with that. So I have a bunch of stuff here commented out, but what we can do is with YAML, we can actually specify a lot of options to pass to that shiny interface to make it more interactive and useful to us. So I'm gonna copy out all, or comment out all of those and uncomment all of these. And so what do we get? So for year, now we have label, value, input as a slider, we have a, a range, we have you know, uh, incrementing steps by one, separator is nothing. Now for data, instead of just MPG or diamonds, we actually have, you know, an imp a select input of, of an array here. So this is actually how you specify arrays in YAML. So we can specify an array of options. And then for file, this is just some, a bell and whistle. I didn't actually need this or use this at all, but you'll see what this looks like. So if I just knit the document, it's still going to say, you know, the defaults year is equal to 2017 right now, unless we change it, it's equal to MPG unless we change it and it's equal to that file, you know, that doesn't matter. And then actually we're gonna put toggle in here because we forgot about that one. So toggle is equal to uh, 
true. So with all of those set, let's knit with parameters again. Now, this, if, you, if you ran with params equals ask, it'll do the exact same thing that I'm about to show you, but it will open up in your browser. It's just more efficient to do knit with parameters if you're using RStudio because then it pops up that window, closes it when you're done, and opens up your output for you automatically like you're used to unless you disable that option. So knit with parameters, and we get this. So in this case, you can actually change what year you want it set to. You get a dropdown of all of your selectable options that are available to you. If you want to select a file, it'll open up your file system. That's really useful if you're going to take an input data set for some reason, or you have a standard input that you can just put into here. Really useful feature. Toggle is still the same here, but you get the idea. There are a lot of options that you can do with this Shiny interface, and there's a link in the materials for this um, uh, video that will be in the R Markdown document below. And I will put the link to it in the description in the pin or in the pinned comment below. So you can find all that there. But a lot of options that we can actually do with this. So with our defaults, let's set it to 2013. Uh, MPG, and for that, toggle has to be true. If we knit, you'll get the exact same output that we've been seeing because it's still using those same parameters. But once it's finished, you're going to see the MPG toggle data set. It's set to true, MPG, 2013. Everything's exactly the same, just with a nice interface to actually select your options and parameters. So when might you find this to be a very useful tool? I mean, I think you can already start to see like how this can be implemented to make it more useful to you. Some examples I've seen and some ideas I've had about this are say, say you're in education and you're teaching students. If you want to give them some files and just have a, you know, your answer key easily hidden or presented or whatever, you can actually use the like the toggle option or some other variable and toggle the answer sections for homework questions in this document because you can knit this R Markdown document to a Markdown document. So if you give out homework in Markdown or something like that, you can see how you can withhold pieces of information. So in this case, your answer key, and then you can deal with that. So you have your answer key available to you. You can hide it or whatever. It's all one document, answers and all. Send your, your students what they actually need to use and keep the answers to yourself. Uh, you could also hey, say you're going to make a uh, report for all of your students, so your 80 individuals in your company or whatever, you have a data frame of all of the details of those people, and then you assign each of those um, details to a parameter, you run a loop or a map function, and then you generate a report for each of these people using the parameters that are each of the values for each observation in that data frame, and then using the Blastula package, which is how you can send emails from R, use the, the knitted document and send that report through Blastula, and now you've just emailed everybody their compiled report based on a single button click, basically. You can you run all those functions, generate all the reports, attach them, email them, all within R. And then lastly, I, the example I gave here is say like you have different reports for regions or conditions of data. So if you have, um, you know, say you're doing something where you have to deal with like each county in a state, then you could easily run a report for each county. And making everything simpler with one document, a parameter input, and all of the output documents are changed based on that conditional input. Very, very useful tool for getting more work done with less effort. effort. Thinking, <laughs> working smarter, not harder. Um, there is a link that I will put this in the description below. Um, I don't really have a place to put this document uh, for a repo like my R package reviews, but I will put this link in the comments for or then in the pinned comment below the video because I thought it was a really great uh, guide to doing some of the stuff with parameters. It's uh, UA's book down um, online book, really useful resource for a lot of other things, but really great examples of how to use these parameterized reports. I will leave that in the comment section below. So I hope you found that video interesting and useful. If you like that type of content, I have a whole playlist on just our markdown tips as well as full package reviews on my channel. Feel free to check those out. And before I go, Thank you to my patrons, Devin, Alberto, and Klaus. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.